We are now 26 league games into the championship season and it's fair to say we are loving life. So ever since the last episode, we have been on a hell of a run. They started with a 1-0 away win against top of the league at the time, Bristol City. Nearly filled with the only goal of the game in the 79th minute. We then had a home tie against Redden and won 5-3. Deval, Barton, Leefield with a brace and Stamenkovic. We then beat Leicester in the FA Cup 4th round 1-0. Deval with the only goal of the game in the 78th minute. We then went away from home against Derby, who were doing very well in the league at the same time, and Kobarov got the only goal. Korobov, <laughs> not Kobarov, got the only goal of the game in the 30th minute. We there, we did win away from home against Exeter 3 1. But as you can see by the match stats, we completely dominated. And if you take a notice, they were down to nine men for about 40 minutes of the game, so it's not that impressive. Slager with the goal, Trifinovic and Stelvagen. We then beat Fulham at home, Guerrero, Deval, and Del Pedro with the goals. We then meet, beat Millwall 3-1 away from home in an undeserved win, to be quite honest with you. Korobov, Derval and Slager. Notts County followed that. We won 3-0 at home. Stamenkovic with a hat-trick. A disappointing 0-0 home draw against Middlesbrough followed that. Despite complete domination going by the match stats, we just didn't find a way through. We then beat Southampton 2-1 away from home. Frankie Grand with both goals. Now, Frankie Grand is a young star just recently promoted from the under-23s. At 17 years old, he looks absolutely fantastic. And even though he's probably not going to develop to the point of being actually capable of playing in our first team, I think I might just give him this championship season just to help boost his career. <laughs> Next up was a 2-0 away win against Portsmouth, Stamenkovic and Guerrero with the goals in this one. We follow that up with another 2-0 home win this time. It was Stalvagen and Howes with the goals. And finally was a disappointing 0-0 home draw against Ipswich Town. And that sees the championship table looking like this. We are top of the league. Nine points clear from second place Brighton with two games in hand. We are absolutely dominating this league. And uh, if we don't win the title, I'll be absolutely astounded. In terms of today's episode, then we will be coming back for the League Cup quarter final against Fulham. We're getting there. In terms of the domestic cup competitions, you may remember us speaking about this before. Obviously, I would love to play in Europe at some point during this series, but it will require us to get there whilst we're in the championship. Now, this might be one of our best opportunities ever. If we can get past Fulham today, there's still four championship clubs left in this. If Some of them can maybe pull some upsets. You never know, we might have a relatively easy route through to the final. <laughs> it's, it's not likely... But the only massive club left in it is Manchester City. So, um, yeah, still it's it's still a pipe dream, but it's a pipe dream I'm holding on to. We will also then face Coventry away from home back in the Championship action. They're currently sitting 21st. So that should be at least a relatively more straightforward game than this Fulham game. But they're already sitting in 15th, so it's not too far off. And I would anticipate us getting two wins out of two in today's episode. I'm certainly hoping for that. Now, the reason I did promote Frankie Grand into the first team was Lee Field has been injured for like six to seven weeks. So he has missed quite a number of games. So with him returning to full fitness, we are going to give him back the start. But I look to bring on Frankie Grand whenever I can. So this will be the lineup for today's game. Harrison Clayton in goal. Housen Trofinovic in the centre-back roles. Jubilbis in the defensive midfield role. With Serginio Guerrero and Korobov as our wing-backs. Unfortunately, Stelvagen. He seems to be injury prone, at least to me. I think he's been injured three or four times already this season. Calero and Derval will be in the centre of the park. Slager will play in behind Leefield and Stamankovic. I've been experimenting with this attack midfield role. I can't quite seem to find either the right player or the right player role or whatever to be able to get the best out of them in most games. So Trek Watista is what we're playing right now, but uh, that is likely to change. So Fulham are playing a pretty attacking tactic. I don't really recognise any of these names apart from Tommy Doyle. He must be getting quite on now, 34 years old. Uh, Guichard, we did sell to Fulham in the summer as a Stoke City boss for 9 million quid. Uh, but, yeah, no real standout players there. First highlight of the game, it's Korobov with a corner. Howes wins the header at the front post, but it's easily saved. The highlight is going to continue, though, so we'll see. Oh, it's a long kick over the top, Fulham. That's a decent strike. Harrison Clayton sort of, certainly makes a meal of it, but he does end up keeping it out. And is the highlight continuing even from now? Serginho in a Calero in the centre of the park. He's got runners. Stamenkovic is one of them. He's got some support, but he goes back to Calero, back to Serginho on this right-hand side. 
He whips it in. Stamenkovic down to Lee Fields. Blocks her Genio. Oh, Slager. Can't get his header on target. Another corner. Korobov to take it again. It's aimed at Howes. It's cleared though. Jubilbis doesn't keep the ball alive. He goes all the way back. Calero with a long punt over the top. Lee Field wins the header. And it's going to be a counter-attack and opportunity for Fulham as Daniel comes down this left-hand side. He goes all the way back to Guichard. Right off. They've took the time, but they've moved it to this right-hand side for Kamara. Daniel goes for the strike. Harrison Clayton manages to keep it out. And uh, we deal with it. Corner for Fulham. Daniel plays it in. Serginio gets it clear, but only plays it back out to Daniel. The corner kick taker. Ranucci will close them down well. If we can win the ball, we can counter here. We don't win the ball, though. And Tommy Doyle feeds it through to Otero. And it goes over the line. Didn't think it was going to be there. I thought the ball was going to uh, maybe just stop on the line and somebody goes to get it. But Fulham go 1-0 up 38 minutes in with Otero's seventh goal of the season. Disappointing. Really, really disappointing. Another corner for us. Korobov to take it once again. Howes gets there this time. And Zach Howes' fifth goal of the season puts us 1-1 up. 1-1 uh, up. 1-1 level. 42 minutes into the match. We've had a good number of corners and the corner tactic is obviously played from post to your best header. And Zach Howes certainly manages it this time. A little bit of a disappointing first half, I would say. It's, we're definitely dominating by the match stats, but at least going by the highlights, Fulham have had the better of the opportunities. Hopefully we see something better in the second half. It looks like um, oh, West Ham are winning. That would be good for us. Obviously, if we do, and let's just get through this game. We'll see the results if we do manage to win. Let's not think too far ahead. First highlight of the second half comes straight away. It's a Fulham free kick. Ah, oh, Jose Victor, his first goal of the season, of course it is. Puts Fulham 2-1 up. Another set piece and uh, really, really poorly defended. We'll see it again here. Doyle heads it on. Trofinovic, the goalkeeper. Everyone should hang their heads in shame at that. Trofinovic has taken the blame. 6.1. His average rating. And that's just really, really disappointing way to concede. And we have ourselves another highlight in the second half. 50 minutes in. Duval wins the ball back. Stamenkovic is set away by Slag. He's in behind one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, he's he's scoring. Of course, he's scoring. I never doubted him for even a single second. And those of you who did should feel ashamed. <laughs> his 13th goal of the season. Put levels things up at 2-2. Two -two. I genuinely believe this was going to hit the keeper. Straight in his face. And just lead to nothing. But thankfully it didn't. You're just so pessimistic sometimes, Sam. You Like, a little bit more optimism. Korobov with a free kick for us. 65 minutes in. Oh, it's going to be in a counter-attack for Fulham. Lamidzi beats two men. He's, he's ran essentially the full length of the pitch there. And that was the end product. Korobov has picked up a knock. We'll bring on Riestra for him on that left wing-back role. That will be a real shame. Korobov has been absolutely fantastic for us this season. Hopefully the injury isn't anything too serious. Lee Field hasn't done a lot this game, so we'll bring on Frankie Grand. Uh, we'll also take off Calero for Julian de San Pedro. As we have another highlight, it's another corner for Fulham that we managed to get clear. But they keep possession. Doyle, Daniel on this right hand side is in. Harrison Clayton with another good save. Fulham have caused us loads of problems this game. We're going to go off attack and, and go to a positive. Five minutes left. And we have ourselves another highlight. Tommy Doyle with a strike. Daniel, oh my god, what a save by Harrison Clayton to keep us in this. Kamara whips it in. <sighs> Tell you what, I think um, on reflection, Fulham probably deserved this win. But Harrison Clayton, what a kick that was. And Grand's in behind. And Frankie Grand puts us 3-2 up completely undeservedly. And Harrison Clayton should be getting man of the match in this game. Just for that assist alone. What a kick out that was. Over the top of the Fulham defence. And Frankie Grant takes full advantage of his little amount of game time that he's gotten. And we are now... Oh, hold on. Let's go back to live. We'll go on the counter for the rest of this game. And, uh, oh, maybe balanced, maybe cautious, whatever. It looks like time is ticking away. We have one final highlight with 10 seconds to go. And hopefully, if we can just like blow the full time whistle ref. Looks like it might actually be an opportunity. Riestra's down on this left-hand side. Duval, back to Riestra, back to Duval. He whips it in. Grand's there. Almost gets his second goal of the game. And there we have it. We are through to the League Cup semi-finals. Let's go and find out what's happening in the other fixtures. So, Championship West Ham, Championship Stoke, Premier League, Manchester City and Norwich. If we can just avoid Manchester City... 
I would be relatively content with that. Now, I don't know how good Norwich City are. They're currently sitting seventh place in the Premier League. But they only did just miss out on relegation last season. So maybe if we get them, we've got a good chance. If we get Manchester City, we've pretty much got no chance. If we get West Ham, I think we've already beat them this season. No, we haven't. We haven't played them yet. Our game against them keeps getting delayed due to internationals. But they are currently sitting mid-table. So West Ham, please. Unfortunately for us, one of our best players so far this season, Oleg Korobov, is going to be out for five weeks. That is disappointing. When you look at his stats, three goals and ten assists and 23 games from left wing back. Average rating of 7.47 in the league. That's absolutely fantastic. And uh, disappointing to lose him for that length of time. And here we have our semi-final draw. Pray for West Ham. Pray for West Ham. Here we go. Automatic. Who is it going to be first? It's going to be Norwich City. I would take this. Oh, we've got West Ham. We have West Ham. We are playing West Ham in the League Cup semi-finals. We will take that all day. Championship opposition gives us the best opportunity that we have to make it to a domestic cup final. And hopefully Norwich can do the number over Man City. So we're here for our second game of today's episode. Only a couple of changes to the starting level from the last time. Frankie Grand comes in for Stamenkovic up front after getting his goal against Fulham and Cox. Comes in for the injured um, Korobov. So Coventry are playing an attacking formation. but playing on the counter. They've still got Mika Marmol playing at left back. Which is just absolutely fantastic. We have our first highlight of the game. 10 minutes in. And it looks like Coventry City are in possession. Short comes down this right hand side for Coventry. His cross is blocked. Who's getting there first? It is going to be Frankie Grand. And Slager picks it up in the centre of the park. He feeds it to Cox on the left hand side. Are you better than Korobov where you're crossing? Serginho down to Slager. Someone. There we are. Serginho Guerrero getting his third goal of the season from right wing back. He doesn't even play that often either when uh, Stelvagen's uh, fit. He is usually my first choice. So to get three goals from that sort of position is fantastic. And uh, we go 1-0 up 10 minutes in. Another highlight now. 18 minutes in. It's again starting with Coventry in possession. This time down the left hand side. Zapasotti, I remember that guy as well. I can't remember. It was Crystal Palace, I think. And I think we sold him whilst we were in the championship for an awful lot of money. Um, but we're giving away free kicks and that. Coventry City go close. Zapasotti will take the free kick. And uh, Pages almost gets them a goal. We are going to go off attacking and move to a more balanced team mentality with us being 1-0 up. Now, it's not something I often do, actually, with this side. Because usually we're just that much better than the opponents. But... It is something I'm going to start doing a little bit more often just to try and keep the amount of goals we concede down. Only a couple of minutes of injury time to go in the first half and we have ourselves another highly Frankie Grant, a slagger, Lee Fields shot is blocked as well. And that was the opportunity. And there we have it then, Coventry nil, Stoke City won half time. I'm relatively content with how things are going. Let's see how we can continue that for the second half. First highlight of the second half comes 70 minutes in. It's Durval with a free kick. And Cox is there, back post. There is no offside given either. So that goal does count his second goal of the season. And we go 2-0 up with only 20 minutes remaining. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Great free kick, great goal. We're getting three points. With only 10 minutes or so to go, we will look to make some changes. Zach House can come off for Trofinovic. Uh, Jubilbis can come off for De San Pedro. And uh, Sebastian Calero can come off for Gavin Barton in the centre of the park. Probably the final highlight of the game. Only four minutes of injury time remaining. Uh, we'll wait and see how this goes. We are currently in possession, which is good. Slager feeds it through to Frankie Grand. Should be scoring that, Frankie. If only your finishing wasn't 10. Oh, my dears. Oh, my dears. Let's watch that again, shall we? I wasn't even commentating, thinking it was leading to nothing. Sanders, back to Harrison Clayton. Heroics last game. Not so heroic this game. With only a few minutes remaining. Coventry City get one back. Callum Short's seventh goal of the season. And there's a highlight straight from kickoff. Hopefully it's going to be us on the attack with this. Cock coming down the left hand side. Whips it in. Grand's there. Heads are just over the bar. And there we have it then. We do survive and claim the three points. Coventry City one. Stoke City two. Uh, Harrison. 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 What do I do with you? So this is how the league table looks after that game. We are now 12 points clear from Bristol City in second place with two games in hand. We are absolutely trouncing the league right now. And uh, I couldn't be happier with our league form. And in terms of the cup competitions, obviously, we're still in the FA Cup. 
and the League Cup. And the FA Cup were only in the third round, so I can't get too excited about that. But the League Cup, that will be coming in the next episode. Of course, we'll be playing it off camera as we do the January transfer window. We're going to be playing West Ham three times in this month. It's going to be a pretty, pretty big month in terms of games. A lot of football to be played in the next 30 day period. We've got QPR and Swansea as well before that. We'll be playing that off camera. And you will see the results of that at the beginning of the next episode. But yeah, really, really pleased with how things are going. And maybe, just maybe, we might be able to play in Europe once in <laughs> during this series. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.